Let's continue our discussion on all things deflection and stiffness related to structures as a structural engineer. And additionally, we'll be discussing more equations that I found useful during my studies for the SE on this subject. Let's get into it. This is just the very, very tippy top, little tiny basics uh, from our last video. Stiffness equals force over some displacement. And then uh, how that translates to a structure is you have a force, a lateral force, either seismic or wind, pushing on your structure, displacing it some amount. Um, this can be called drift as well, building drift. And uh, it displaces some amount under that force. And the amount with which that building displaces is dependent upon the stiffness of the structure and mainly the stiffness of the vertical lateral elements that make up that structure. So a, um, a braced frame or shear walls or moment frames, you know, all of those have um, a certain stiffness to them that you can calculate and determine in order to then back out to figure out how much your building is going to move under a design force. Bending stiffness in its simplest form can be derived with the following equation. E is your modulus of elasticity of the material. Um, I is your moment of inertia. And then L is the length of your, uh, of your member. Now let's add something new. We also have axial stiffness, and this can be derived at its simplest form with uh, the equation as follows. AE over L. Again, A is the area, the cross-sectional area of your member. E is your modulus of elasticity of the material and then L is the length of your member. This, in this instance, is say we flip our cantilever on its side. Eh, you know what, and let's put a roller here so it's not a pure cantilever. And we're applying a force and we're pulling on that member. And it is going to start from there. And then if I do a blue dash below, that member is going to get longer by some amount. And that uh, amount is your displacement um, which is your delta. And so that is dependent upon the stiffness K of your member. And that overall displacement is also dependent upon the amount of force F that you apply to your system. So there's the three harmonics that come together to determine, like we said, um, this first equation up here. So whether it's bending stiffness or axial stiffness, both K's still get dumped back in with your displacement and your force. But why is axial stiffness important to a structural engineer? Well, for our case today, we can use this in conjunction with uh, vertical lateral systems such as brace frames, because as a brace frame is loaded, it is going to deform, you know, sort of like such here, and then this, this brace will compress. But this brace here, will be loaded in with tension, uh, tensile forces, and it will elongate some amount, which is dependent upon axial stiffness. So um, when I unveil those equations in just a little bit here, you're going to see how this equation right here plays into the derivation of those. Now, axial stiffness doesn't just apply to vertical lateral elements like a brace frame. Um, as you can see here, we can also apply it to uh, gravity elements, such as, boom, a truss that I have very clearly drawn to scale. Now, if we were to load this truss, well, maybe not a uniformly distributed load, but let's say, you know, point loads at the joints, because that's how trusses like to act. Um, and by doing so, that means that we are loading the truss only with uh, axial loading of all of its individual components rather than introducing any bending moment into the system. Um, but you might be saying, well, we are going to get displacement that kind of looks just like bending deformation. So how does axial stiffness apply? Well, again, like I just said, well, we'll draw our displacement, some amount. That means uh, we can treat this like, you know, like a, like a deep beam or like a concrete beam, if we still like to think about it like that. And our bottom cord, I'll go green, is our, you know, our rebar, if we want to think about it like that. And our top cord in yellow is our compression block. And that means we ide idealize this with the bottom cord experiencing tensile forces and our top cord experiencing compressive forces. We are getting deformation. That means we are getting elongation of our bottom cord. Elongation is due to axially loading that member, and the amount that that member deforms 
is dependent upon the axial stiffness of that member. So that's where uh, these equations will come into play and we'll see this in a little bit. But don't think this is just a topic for lateral elements. It can just as much be applied to gravity elements as well. If you want to increase your axial stiffness, then you can do that by either increasing your cross-sectional area or increasing your modulus of elasticity. So by doing that, basically you need to change the material property of your member or subsequently, since it's below the division line or the denominator, we can, uh, so increase A or increase E, or we can decrease the length of your member. And we would want to increase our stiffness of our system in order to decrease the overall displacement of our system. We wanna keep that thing nice and rigid and we don't want it moving too much. That on paper, simplistically, sounds great. So you might say, well, why don't we just uh, jack up the stiffness of our structures in order to make sure that they don't displace that much under load. Simply put, it is not always the best idea to increase the stiffness of your structure to make it a better structure. Sometimes that's way too expensive in order to do that, and other times it can actually detract from the overall performance of your structure. We won't talk any further on that today, but we may jump into it in the future. Let me know in the comments down below if we wanna chat further. And as promised, here are our further equations for our different vertical lateral systems. Now, take these with a grain of salt, because if you do a Google search or you know, you're, you're searching the, the interwebs, you're gonna find a lot of different equations that all stem from the same principles, but these are the ones that I used. All right, first one, we have our pinned moment frame. So at the base, we have idealized the connection as pin-pin, and then the moment connections happen at the top of the columns to the beams. Now, the displacement equation and stiffness equation are as follows. Remember that the stiffness equation um, is the inverse of the displacement equation. There are three things that contribute to the overall stiffness of a moment frame system. The stiffness of the columns, the stiffness of the beams, and the stiffness of the connections of the beams to the columns. Through my studies, I've found that increasing the stiffness of the beam overall makes a stiffer system. However, you do not want to necessarily do that because of code provisions and ductility detailing requirements in order to create a safe and code compliant moment frame system. Simply put, this is referred to as strong column weak beam design. And it's exactly as it sounds. All of your columns within your moment frame system need to be stronger than the beams in your system. At a high level, this means that your columns remain safe during a seismic event where your beams are the things that get beat up and take most of the damage. Columns are more critical than beams in an overall system, and that can lead to catastrophic collapse if they were to fail. Whereas beams can be designed to take damage, yield, and absorb energy without a significant risk of collapse of the structure. And these beams and columns are very, very meticulously detailed under strict code requirements. Remember from last time that in my displacement equation, I kept the force there, um, but in my stiffness equation, I omitted the force. Um, if you are curious on that, jump back to the other video where we discussed that. Some key points here, you have your moment of inertia of your column denoted as sub C and moment of inertia of your beam as sub B. So keep track of those. And then your modulus of elasticity E is constant. So this assumes that your system, you know, is, is steel steel and it's the same property steel for both the columns uh, and the beams. But keep track of that. If you had some type of composite system or or some mismatching steel, you may want to talk with your principal or project manager or look more closely into that. Moving down, we have our fixed moment frame. Uh, similar, except there's this honkin' equation. So we are fixed at the base and we are fixed at the connections of the beams to the columns. Same variables throughout, just jumbled up uh, and expanded upon in all reality. So pause the video here if you'd like to, because it's a lot to take in, but always check me on this, because again, I am not 100% sure on how this was derived. And then after you do figure this out, then it's just the inverse gets you your stiffness of your fixed fixed moment frame system. And lastly, we have our single braced frame. We have a couple of new variables here. You have L sub BR, so that's the length of your brace. And then you have A sub BR is the cross-sectional area of your brace. 
Uh, this design, again, simplistically assumes that your brace is the same type of material as your frame. Um, so if this was something like a BRB, um, where it's a composite uh, brace, then that that's a whole different ballpark. So this is more of a very simplistic steel steel only system. And if you just quickly notice at the end, the components that make up this equation are based upon your axial stiffness, because this system, as we talked about, the diagonal brace will elongate under loading, and thus the equation is tied with the axial stiffness of the system. And you can see it represented throughout. But hey, that'll do it today. Please like and subscribe if you like all things structural engineering. Let me know in the comments down below if you know I, I was hazy on a couple of these subjects or you want me to talk further about them. I can. This subject goes so much further um, and there's so much to it. So it's, uh, it's something definitely worth continuing to discuss. Otherwise, this is Rich with Team Kesteva. Appreciate your support, liking, subscribing, filling that auditorium every day. Uh, let's keep learning, let's keep becoming better engineers together. Peace.